from the School of Communication at Loyola University Chicago. This is Studio 51. Hello and welcome to Studio 51. I'm Ashley Mastrovich. And I'm Ashton Mitchell. Thanks for joining us this Tuesday evening. Here's Kristen Immel with Studio 51's weekly update. Good evening turkey lovers and shoppers alike. Here's the week in review. Consumers were spending money in droves this weekend. Online spending Black Friday topped $1 billion for the first time. Cyber Monday sales are estimated to reach almost $2 billion. What are your numbers? The Powerball jackpot has reached $500 million today. This is the second highest jackpot in lottery history, despite ticket prices being doubled in January to $2. No Powerball winner has been drawn since October 6th. Overseas this week, a ceasefire was declared between Israel and the Palestinian militant group Hamas. Pushed by the U.S. and Egypt, the ceasefire ended eight days of bloody conflicts. In Egypt, thousands are flooding the streets of Cairo to, to protest President Mohamed Morsi's decree, which gives himself broad powers above any court. President Obama will meet today with Mexico's president-elect Enrique Peña Nieto to discuss trade relations. In Chicagoland this week, Representative Jesse Jackson Jr. resigned from Congress after two weeks after his re-election. Jackson said he is, he is cooperating with the federal investigation into his activities, but blamed his health for his decision to step down. Christopher Vaughn has been sentenced today to four life terms after being convicted of shooting his wife and three children in 2007. Last week, the CTA announced increases in the cost of passes. Mayor Rahm Emanuel stands behind the rate increase. If passed, the new fares would take effect mid-January. That's the talk around the water cooler. So, Ashton, Ashley, have you two bought your Powerball tickets yet? You know, I don't think there's any chance that I'm going to win, so I'm just going to skip it this time around. I'm actually going to give it a shot, even though I've heard it's more likely to be struck by lightning than to actually win. Well, I won't be here if I win. <laughs> Good to know, Kristen. Thanks. It's Hollywood Awards season, and uh, again, and the Global Golden Globe nominations come out later this month. Reporter Stephanie Stanford sat down with Loyola film major Anthony Rossi to look back at some of this year's biggest movies. Summer may be the season for blockbusters at the box office, but this is the time when the competition really heats up in Hollywood. I'm here with Loyola student and film major Anthony Rossi to recap the best films of 2012 and see what we still have look to look forward to. Anthony, thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me. So the Golden Globe nominations and Oscar nominations are coming up soon. As our movie guru, what are your top three films of 2012? Well, the ones that I enjoyed the most were definitely Argo, Seven Psychopaths, and The Dark Knight Rises. And what do you think will be the best picture nomination? I think that the surefire spot that's going to sweep the Oscars is definitely Lincoln, just because of the, you know, the director, Steven Spielberg, is just a lock in mm -hmm. that cast, you know. Do you think Daniel Day-Lewis might get best actor? Oh, sure thing. <laughs> Awesome. And The Avengers was the highest grossing film of 2012. What about this film made it so successful? Well, I mean, the star power of the cast, when you have Robert Downey Jr. and Jeremy Renner in leading roles, uh, that's definitely going to attract an audience already. But uh, to attach a name like Joss Whedon as a director is going to bring in a whole new sci-fi audience appeal. Um, but I think another thing that really helped it generate so much money is uh, the the increased ticket price due to IMAX and 3D. So it wasn't just about the sheer amount of people that came in, it was also people paying the extra amount to see it in 3D or in IMAX. Definitely. Awesome. We know the hype surrounding some of these films is not always just about the picture, it's also about the actors and directors as well. Who are some of the breakout stars of 2012? Well, uh, in my personal opinion, the biggest breakout was Martin McDonough, who directed Seven Psychopaths. That was his uh, major label film debut as a director. Um, and I think that really is going to get him some attention. But as far as actors go, I think Rebel Wilson is becoming a real staple in comedy. Um, and after The Hobbit, uh, Martin Freeman is going to be getting a lot of attention as well. Mm -hmm. And then, um, what are some comedies that Rebel Wilson has been in recently? Uh, well, she was in Bridesmaids last year, but she uh, kind of got a more major role in uh, Pitch Perfect. Awesome. Um, are there any films that we should be looking forward to this holiday season? Well, Django Unchained, uh, the new Tarantino movie, looks excellent. Uh, the Hobbit is probably going to be a huge uh, attraction. And uh, This is 40. Um, Judd Apatow's new film looks hilarious as well. So. 
Uh, well, thank you for your time, Anthony. Uh, back to you, Ashton Ashley. Coming up, we talk one-on-one -on -one with Loyola's Person of the Week. And learn how to keep yourself healthy this holiday season. Stay with us. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. <laughs> LUV, Exhale. love you. Baller. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. Would you dream of something I did? Are you on your way to the mall? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Welcome back to Studio 51. Now let me introduce you to Hira Nadim. Here is a student from Pakistan studying at Loyola for this semester. She is here today to talk about her education and reflect on the life of a young Pakistani girl, Malala Yousafzai, who almost lost her life fighting for an education in her country. Here is Loyola's Person of the Week. Hira, thank you for joining us this evening. You're welcome, it's my pleasure. Thank you. So tell me how you came to Loyola University. Well, I got a scholarship by U.S. Department of State and they selected almost 100 students from all over Pakistan and then they sent them to different universities in different states of the United States and I guess I, I consider myself lucky to be placed at Loyola because I'm learning a lot and, and I'm having a great experience here. Have you ever been to Chicago before? Oh no, never. It's actually my first time outside of my home country. That's very exciting. Yeah, what do you hope to learn though while you're at Chicago? Well, uh, I guess I'm learning a lot uh, when it comes to my field, journalism, TV, broadcasting. Mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot. Very cool. Now tell me your initial reaction of Malala. What do you think the Pakistani people are going to gain out of this tragic incident? Uh, well, initially, when everyone was shocked because she's a young girl, energetic girl, and she's always always supported education, and I, I would say education is key to success and change. So people were shocked. I was shocked and surprised, and uh, they were angry, they were shocked, and that was the initial reaction. And what they would learn is obviously uh, to, to raise their voice, uh, be courageous, and work for, for the progress, and get educated, get education, because again, I would say that education is the thing. It is the key, key. to change. Very good. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you. Thanks for that inspiring report, Ashley and Hira. Now to Anna Haling for a look at a smoky habit on the rise amongst college students. That's right. More and more college students are lighting up to smoke. Not cigarettes, but hookah. According to a recent nationwide survey, nearly one in three college students has smoked tobacco from a hookah or water pipe. This type of smoking is enticing. The tobacco is generally flavored. And many believe it's less harmful than smoking cigarettes. But health officials warn that people inhale 100 to 200 times the amount of smoke in a 45-minute hookah session than from smoking a cigarette. Hookah has also been linked to long-term health problems, including lung cancer and heart disease. And it's that time of year again. Each year you hear it. Get your flu shot. Last year, 42% of the population rolled up their sleeves and did so. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is again recommending that everyone older than six months get a shot. The CDC estimates that the vaccine prevented 5 million cases of influenza last year. Some things to consider. The flu vaccine does not cause the flu. The injection doesn't actually contain a live virus. And the flu can get serious. Each year, thousands of people die. It's often confused with the stomach flu, but influenza affects the lungs and breathing, and it can turn deadly. And for people who can't face that needle, there's a nasal spray. The CDC advises people get vaccinated early, so visit cityofchicago.org to find vaccine locations near you. And for the tip of the week, has the Starbucks Red Cup craze hit you? For a healthier holiday drink, switch from 2% to non-fat milk and pass up that whipped cream. You'll save 100 calories and 11 grams of fat. Now that's festive. The ladies, that chocolate, those chocolate shavings don't have any calories, so. It's good to know <laughs> for my chocolate habit, Anna. Thanks yes. so much. Get prepared for 51 seconds of sports with Amanda Quiz. And a little later, Studio 51's Foodie gives us his top tips for students eating out on a budget. And our critical eye discusses Loyola's newest addition to the Performing Arts Center.
Thanks for staying with us. Big week for sports in Chicago. Amanda Quiz has the latest in 51 seconds. It might be cold outside, but basketball season is heating up here at Loyola. The men got their second win in a row with a defeat over Northern Illinois on Saturday. The Lady Ramblers had their three-game winning streak snapped with a loss to Northwestern on Sunday. It was a tough, tough one for the Bulls last night. They had a 27-point lead over the Bucks in the third quarter, but ended up losing the game 93-92. to And just when fans of the Big Ten had gotten used to a conference made of 13 schools, the NCAA announced the addition of Maryland and Rutgers into the group. For those of you keeping count, the Big Ten is now comprised of 15 teams. And Bears fans are resting a bit easier after Sunday's big win over rival Minnesota. Jay Cutler had a great game, proving once again that so goes the Bears quarterback, so goes Bears football. This has been Sports in 51. Back to you, Ashton. Thanks for that quiz. Now let's turn to Gabby Demergen, joining us to talk about the Bob Newhart Family Theater. Loyola University welcomes the Newhart Family Theater, which is located on the second floor of the Mundelein Center for Fine and Performing Arts. Before entering Loyola's new main stage, a beautiful gallery welcomes you in the lobby. The Newhart is a thrust-style space with 215 fixed seats and 20 additional flexible seats. The theater also includes a new underground scenic lighting and costume shop, an experimental theater, and a rehearsal performance and classroom. The New Heart kicked off the season with Illuminating Voices. Directed by Sarah Gable, Illuminating Voices is a collection of short plays written by Loyolans. You can look forward to two more main stage productions at the New Heart Family Theater later in the school year. With the holidays just around the corner, Chicago has tons of shows to get you in the festive spirit. The Joffrey Ballet is celebrating 25 years of holiday magic with the Nutcracker, which runs from December 7th to the 27th. Don't miss out on what the Washington Post is calling a theatrical event of irresistible power. This season, the Goodman Theater is promising more merriment than ever before with their 35th anniversary of A Christmas Carol. The show runs through to December 29th, so get your tickets today and spread some holiday cheer. Let's take a look at some restaurants that keep both your stomach and your wallet full. Hey guys, Devon is home to a number of economical, delicious, ethnic food options. Students can travel down this diverse street and indulge in their favorite foods. A popular dine-in spot for Loyola students and staff alike is Thai Spice Restaurant. It is about an eight-minute walk west from Lakeshore Campus on 1320 West Devon Avenue. If you are looking for a great, affordable food and a memorable experience, check it out. Among the many favorites that Thai Spice has to offer, their Pad Thai seems to be the people's favorite, arguably the best in the city. Whether you like beef, chicken, or vegetarian, there's a dish for you. I myself had a dish called Gapo Kai, which is ground chicken, spices, and basil paired with any noodle of your choice. It is to die for. The average cost per person is between seven and $12. Thai Spice delivers, and if you are 21 or over, BYOB is permitted. The hours of operation are Tuesday through Thursday, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., Friday through Saturday, 5 p.m. to 11 p.m., and Sunday, 4 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. That is your latest on food. Back to you. That's our news for today. Thanks for watching Studio 51, brought to you by Loyola University Chicago School of Communication Broadcast News. You can also follow us on Twitter at Loyola Studio 51 or like our Facebook page to get our latest updates. Have a good evening. We'll see you next week.